It's 8.52 here in New York. I'm Brian Gumble. We understand that there has been a plane crash on the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. You're looking at the uh, World Trade Center. We understand that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. We don't know anything more than that. We don't know if it was a commercial aircraft. We don't know if it was a private aircraft. We have no idea how many were on board or what, is, what the extent of the injuries are right now. Just getting in some new video of the blast. I, I want to play it. At least six people have been reportedly killed after a vehicle drove into pedestrians and cyclists in Manhattan in New York. A suspect has been arrested. The, the FBI is treating it as a terrorist attack. Manhattan, New York, October 31st, 2017. Boston Marathon, April 15th, 2013. New York City, September 11th, 2001. Uh, that an American Airlines plane on a flight from Boston to Los Angeles, according to American Airlines, is one of the planes that was hijacked and was crashed into the World Trade Each Center. Each of these are terrorist attacks that could have been prevented or could have been learned from if the government had greater access to our private records. One of the most recent events that brought America's right to privacy versus national security to the public eye was the tragic incident that happened in San Bernardino, California. We are in pursuit of the uh, suspect vehicle. We got shots fired out the back window. On December 2nd, 2015, at around 10.30 a.m., Rizwan Farouk and his wife Tashfeen Malik went into Farouk's place of work, a social services center, carrying firearms. There's people with machine guns, with ARs, that are shooting up at my work. I work at Inland Regional Center. In two to three minutes, they shot over 100 rounds, killing 14 people and wounding 22 others. Farouk and Malik then fled the scene and ended up dying in a shootout with the police, which a neighbor then recorded. The FBI became involved and discovered more weapons at the killer's home. They also obtained Farouk's cell phone, which needed a password. If more than 10 unsuccessful attempts were made to figure out the password, the information on the phone would be wiped out. The FBI wanted Apple to write software that would not wipe out the information after 10 attempts. We still have one of those killer's phones that we have not been able to open. Right? It's been over two months now. We're still working on it. U.S. Judge Sherry Pime ordered Apple to give access by providing a program, which Apple then refused to do. They wanted to protect their customers' right to privacy. The FBI, on the other hand, stated that having access to the phone material could shed light on why the couples picked the target they did, whether they were planning other attacks, and whether they received any direction or support from overseas. The case resulted with the FBI being able to hack into the phone without the help of Apple. And though the case has resolved, the right to privacy versus national security is still a growing and sensitive issue. Global terror alert website publisher Evan Coleman stated that 90% of terrorist activity on the internet takes place using social networking tools. If terrorists are using the internet, authorities need to have access to follow and track what they're doing. Lives have been saved through technology. Through tracking documents and communications, FBI Special Agent Brian DeBlank was able to link a suspect to the failed 2009 New York subway suicide mission. Some argue that they feel threatened or uncomfortable with the government having this broad access. Having government access to privacy is intimidating. Absolutely. However, is the thought of potential terrorist attacks not more intimidating? By allowing privacy to be a little more open, we are making ourselves and our country a lot more safe. Jonathan Strickland, a staff writer for the website How Stuff Works, noted that gathering intelligence is, by its very nature, invasive. But without intelligence, it would be difficult or even impossible to predict and prevent terrorist attacks. United States citizens should be open to government having access to their private records because if an attack could have been prevented or if a life could have been saved through taking away someone's rights, then it is worth it. Because a life is more important than someone's privacy, the right to privacy is a threat to our national security.